Item sets for a seriously shameful yet strange section of TF2 story. Simply show up sporting your Sunday best and you'll be shredding through souls without saying sorry. It's a subject that's been spoken about and yet they seem to miss the most severe part about these sets. The synergies. Item combos and synergies are a key aspect of TF2, with 160 unique weapons and a total combination of 2,224 unique weapon loadout combos. Take a look at everyone's favorite black box conch and escape plan, with a loadout so focused on annoying you that it physically pains me to play it right now. The concept of three random weapons coming together to create something so powerful is inspiring. But there are outliers to this, being the item sets. Since item set items were developed and bundled together within the respective loadouts, they were already designed to work well for the other weapons they were paired with. Right? Maximizing and mitigating the minefield from mid-range while easily maneuvering from any menaces, not to mention mad milk mending any misfortune you may come across. Be mindful of the milkman. He'll mollywop you. The Special Delivery. When originally added with his item set bonus, granted Scout an additional 25 HP, increasing it to a maximum of 150. Combine that with the Mad Milk 75% health back on hit rather than today's 60%, and the short stops increase healing from all sources, and you can very easily see the strategy Valve intended for this loadout. And not even mentioning the best part, the Holy Mackerel, for ultimate flexing. Due to a long-standing, unintentional design up. feature, the bonuses that the short stop applies, such as his extra healing and knockback increase, apply to Scout as a whole, not just with the weapon equipped. Meaning you could throw Mad Milk, rush in with the mackerel, and backpedal with the short stop, or play as Valve intended for mid-range, peppering opponents and tanking hits harder than Rihanna against Chris Brown. Flash forward to now, where people think Chris Brown is Chris Rock getting hit with karma thanks to Will Smith, and this loadout still synergizes well within itself. Primarily due to the benefit of how strong and unchanged Mad Milk has been throughout the years, with only a slight health on hit reduction from 75% to 60%, and the ability to recharge it faster by extinguishing teammates. Mad Milk is just a beast of a weapon, and will always perform extremely well regardless of your primary. The short stop, on the other hand, has fallen a bit. You no longer have 25 extra health, nor increased healing from all sources. Instead, you have this dainty thing. Couldn't knock over tiny tuberculosis Tim with that. Of course, the question on everyone's mind is, does it synergize? I mean, kinda. As mentioned before, the item set works well, but not to the credit of the Holy Macro or Shortstop, but the sheer power of Mad Milk. The thing is as busted as a nut compared to the Shortstop's Catholic chest. You can toss Mad Milk and pepper enemies from safety, but not to the same effect it once held. In terms of actual damage and consistency, however, the Scattergun and Soda Popper mathematically deal more damage and, as a result, more healing and I'll always prefer the guillotine or pistol to maximize on keeping some distance. Overall, this synergy still sorta of succeeds. Certainly isn't as strong as it used to be, but it hasn't fallen from grace, and can still pack a nice punch when you play scout passively rather than aggressively. It's the baseline for just good enough, requiring no fixes in my eye. A slow start to be sure, but simply shooting some sorry simpleton will soon see you swiftly spiraling to a sprint. Just be sure to stay several spans away from any sources of suffering. The secondary sorta of supports the speed, but stands out stronger by itself. The Baby Face Blaster. Oh boy, a love-hate story rivaling my relationship with Black Tar Heroin. It had its ups, its downs, and its all-arounds. Upon being released, the Babyface Blaster slowed you down by 35%, meaning Scout was the third slowest class, only outspeeding Heavy and Soldier. It still built boost on hit, however the boost was instantly lost upon jumping. Not double jumping, just jumping at all. Thankfully, it wasn't lost upon taking damage. Pretty harsh, but it had 6 shots in the clip, was 40% more accurate, and had a massive 30% damage penalty, meaning it was meant for quick hit and run tactics. As for the Pretty Boy's Pocket Pistol, it gave Scout 15 extra health, granting him 140 HP, which is an extremely odd amount, full on immunity to fall damage, to counter the fact you couldn't afford to double jump, a 25% slower firing speed, and an extremely harsh 50% damage increase to fire. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. 
I'm not quite sure how these would play off one another. Most of the pocket pistol's bonuses seem to exist to counter the downsides of the babyface blaster, the extra health to counter the lack of initial mobility, and the immunity to fall damage for the boost loss on jumps, and the fire vulnerability probably being there to punish scouts who can now dart in and out of Pyro's range with ease due to the increased speed and accuracy. It's a mishmash of mechanics and a rather messy marriage between these two. The babyface blaster today now crawls around like a baby. Being unable to jump was simply a manner of willpower and could be avoided, but losing all speed by just being hit by an attack that does 25 damage is extremely harsh. The clip reduction from 6 to 4 didn't help, neither did the removal of this increased accuracy. You know, the thing that makes you build boosts from a safer distance? Sure, they also got rid of the damage penalty and slightly buffed Scout's default speed at zero boost from a near standstill to retaining his position as the fastest class, but for what? You get sneezed on and you lose your boost, your house, your car, your kids, your wife, and I won't even mention what happens to your dog. Thankfully, the pretty boy pocket pistol received a nice makeover. It doesn't exist to alleviate the negatives of the babyface blaster with his increased firing speed and health on hit. A nice in-between of mad milk and the stock pistol, and personally, I find it to be the strongest pistol. With its only downside being a smaller clip, of course with the way it works its DPS is stronger for the first clip compared to stock, making it an easy write off. These weapons essentially went through a divorce, with the pocket pistol seeing other primaries and standing out as a strong, independent pistol that needs no scattergun to slouch on, and as for the babyface blaster, it's sitting there in the kitchen with a bowl of ice cream crying about the glory days. Thankfully, this is couples therapy now, and we're gonna try and buff the babyface blaster without it needing to be supported by the pocket pistol too much, promoting independence and codependence between the two. Currently, the babyface boost on hit loss is as harsh as the Don Keeley depression. 25 damage is all it takes to lose all boost and faith in humanity. Let's increase that to 75 damage, while also making it impossible to double jump with the weapon while out. Double jumping no longer removes boosts either, meaning you can successfully pull out your pistol to harass soldiers or pyros without too much worry about losing all mobility. The current Pretty Boy Pocket Pistol is already a fine weapon, however I feel like it needs to fall more in line with being a pocket pistol. It's stronger than stock and needs to play a tad bit more of a supportive backseat role. Hence the following changes. Increased deployment speed, tighter spread, but the removal of the health on hit, and the retaining of the clip size penalty and with a slight damage penalty and holster speed penalty. This is a pistol designed to finish off low HP targets rather than being a weird support weapon that somehow out damages stock. A good all rounder that would be a side grade to stock. This new set would focus on either doing minuscule damage to build boost from afar to allow a scout to rush in to deal with the heavy hits with the babyface blaster. When coming across a target too tough to tangle with, pull out your secondary to finish them off. The cost of losing your speed is negated by your ability to now double jump around. This set focuses around swapping between high damage and high speeds, but a high risk of losing said bonuses, unless swapped intelligently to the pocket pistol, allowing you to finish targets in retaliation or to outmaneuver them vertically to escape. Leaping lizards, Batman! Laughing at those losers who lay to the land by leveling up your hype. The longer airtime lengthened by the winger and atomizer, capable of lobotomizing anyone with a lucky level head blow. The number one fan used to be my number one most used scout loadout. The old soda popper built hype via running around rather than damage, and instead of granting extra jumps, it granted mini crit damage. Unfortunately, you couldn't control when the mini crits came out, much like one of these 19 body part jokes. Mini crits when you're close to an enemy is nice, but when you're too far, well, thankfully you had the winger to back it up with his increased damage and no jump height. It's 2011, not 2013. Then we had the Atomizer. Remember when Scout had powerful melee weapons? The Atomizer was essentially a direct upgrade from stock. Sure, it wasn't knocking anyone out of the ballpark with its slower swing speed and damage penalty, but it gave Scout another jump at the cost of 10 HP, giving him hops that rival Jordan. It was an exceptional utility tool used to harass enemies even more. The thing was amazing and untouched until Jungle Inferno. Replacing the Crystal Pepsi of old with fucking Pepsi Nitro, the Soda Popper stands out as being a nice side grade to stock with his extra mobility and sheer damage output. The Force of Nature crawled for the Soda Popper to walk. 
or fly, I guess. The winger received a buff that was more in need than Greece's financial office, granting it its signature extra jump height that makes it a niche but helpful weapon. But with the good comes the bad. The atomizer received massive nerfs, making its usefulness go from thanks grandma for the birthday money to grandma forgot where she was again. Making the triple jump go from just having it equipped to needing to hold it out was harsh, but even harsher was the deployment penalty it had, meaning when you needed the extra jump the most, it took forever to get to it. So we had a devastating item set based on high burst damage output and mobility to a new item set based on high mobility while retaining some burst damage. This new item set works alright, the soda popper's height meter and sheer damage output makes it an ideal primary, and the winger with his increased jump height and damage made for a good harassing tool, but the atomizer is just mediocre. Removing it from an on-demand triple jump to a rather delayed triple jump requires some fixing to make this set truly shine. First off, get rid of that horrid, horrid deployment penalty and give it a helpful 60% deployment speed increase, the same as the degreaser, in addition to a 30% faster holster time. You want to be able to reliably get a triple jump off when you need it, not wait around until Grease pays its national debt off for it. If it feels too strong, maybe lower its damage from 15% to 20%, like the old atomizer had, essentially making an in-between bridge version of the current atomizer and the age-old ancient one of the apocalypse. Taking thrashes and frumps whilst tanking it all, hence the title. The Tank Buster is a trio of triage, toughness, and tensile tricks. One of the few item sets that has gone through hardly any changes since its release, meaning its core identity, viability, and gimmick hasn't changed much at all either. The Battalion's backup in the past gained rage through taking damage rather than dissing it out. And of course, if you're taking damage, you need to heal from said damage. Hence, the Black Box Hellfont hit. It had a slightly weaker but much more consistent health on hit of 15 HP. So you take a bit of damage, build up a bit of rage, shoot a bit, and make enemies explode into tiny bits. Popping your Baron to make you even more defensible. It's pretty easy to see how it would play out. Placing Little Willy in the museum and pulling out the Abrahams, we can see that this item set hasn't changed in its devastation and defensive capabilities. It's actually partially improved. The battalion's backup now gains rage by dealing damage rather than taking it, and it applies a sentry defensive bonus to teammates now as well. The black box now gives health base on damage dealt to a maximum of 20 HP. This set still works, but something feels wrong using it. Like there's some evil lurking. Oh. Oh no. Oh no! Yeah, this item set shares the same gimmick of unsolvable, unkillable murder machine with the crutch box, except weaker and arguably much more useful to your teammates rather than a solo soldier. Unfortunately, there isn't exactly a way to buff the battalions to contend with the conch and make this set truly shine without it being even more devastating to use together. Thankfully, the Tank Buster set alone still works well together and doesn't make your enemies call you slurs in the chat when using it. I see no real reason to try and buff the weapons to make them better, although it is a shame the conch will be a stronger choice 8 out of 10 times. It's an item set, interestingly enough. I have little idea what idiot at Valve inspected these items and integrated them together because I have to inquire and inform about it. I bet more than half of you didn't know this was an actual item set, and those that did probably don't know how the hell this is supposed to work. This is a real oddball combo going on here, with both items receiving hardly any changes, so we're skipping how the set worked in the past and talking about the present, because boy oh boy is this thing a gift from hell. The Mantrez is an extremely niche weapon choice that's only ever seen on Trollger, maximizing your mobility and air control and promoting landing on your enemies. But of course, you aren't using the Market Gardener, but the disciplinary action, meaning you'll be forced to stick around teammates and avoid trying to attack enemies with your melee. The real downside of this set is that you can't ditch any dangerous close denizens for dead. You have no shotgun to deal with pesky scouts, nor the health saved up from using the gunbones. You could pull out your melee, but recall that it has a 25% damage penalty, making it extremely unreliable, like hitting enemies with styrofoam. 
So, you can't get too close to enemies for too long, nor can you afford to jump around like a bunny in heat. You're forced to jump in, bomb an enemy for as much damage as you can, and retreat back to your team, using disciplinary action to help you with your lack of rocket jumps, making for an extremely inefficient hit and run tactic. The one saving grace this set has is that you can pick any rocket launcher with it. Stock only seems to really work if you have a team there to support you with, else you'll be waiting for health packs the entire match. The direct hit with good aim does take care of close range pests that you can't really afford getting close to, but isn't ideal for bombing targets in quick succession. The Beggar's Bazooka... Man, I'm dead. Oh, I love, I love the Beggar's Bazooka, dude. I love not being able to hit my enemy even though I'm looking straight at him, dude. I love the Beggar's Bazooka, it's my favorite. I play fucking Sniper, do you think I could stand bullets not going where I'm aiming? Come on. Yeah, we're gonna need to run some more tests for that one. The three most promising rocket launchers are the Liberty Launcher, simply due to its reduced self-blast damage, allowing you to bomb enemies and escape easier, ideal for bomb runs. Not good for anything else, though. TF2 facts! Did you know that the Liberty Launcher's damage is proven to be the same as being shot with a marshmallow gun? The black box nullifies that issue by allowing you to bomb an enemy, get your health back, and jump away with no worries. Unlike the Liberty Launcher, which hurts as much as getting punched by a baby, the black box is like punching a baby. The airstrike functions in a similar boat as well, packing a decent punch that increases per kill, a slight self damage reduction allowing you for more jumps, and obviously, it's made to be in the air, pairing somewhat nicely with the mantreads. This entire set is sorta... kinda... A little bit, to a certain degree, gotta say, in terms of item sets, this one is undeniably the worst one to use. I'm not having fun with this at all, and this isn't like a joking meme thing, right? Like Fat Scout is, where I could be like, oh, I got one kill, dude, oh! No, I'm just like rushing in, doing no damage, taking half my health off every time I have to run into a fight or get out of a fight because I just can't do anything. Like, the be one benefit and saving grace I have is that. Is that I got away with 2 HP. That's probably a bot who just joined. No way is that the real whammo. <laughs> so, how on earth do we fix this and make these items work ever so slightly better together? It's actually hilariously simple. We're simply going to tack on a slim sprint speed stat to those shoes here. This keeps Soldier as the second slowest class, going from 80 to 90%, just three less than Demo's base walking speed. The problem with the current item set is that once you get close to an enemy, you can't really afford to get away. You either lose self engaging them or retreating thanks to rocket jumping, so hopefully adding a nice bit of passive speed on top cancels it all out. Great Gazooks and Egad! These guns of Goliath's size will give any goddamn ghoul giving you a goofy eye, giving them hell and gamma radiation while you gallivant through the battleground in search of glory. One of the three item sets in collaboration with Weta Workshop, Dr. Grodbot's Victory Pack has the best cosmetics of the three, the strongest weapon being the Cow Mangler, and the weakest with the Righteous Bison. Unlike the other item sets that seem to have some sort of gimmick or overlying theme related to its stats, this one just tries to be its side grade from stock. Keyword tries to be. The Cow Mangler is obvious enough. You switch out your ability to deal with sentries to not have to worry about ammo, meaning it's much easier to fight enemies instead, with its charge shot being used against crowds for maximum damage, making it a very spammable weapon. As for the Righteous Bison, I mean, it's supposed to be spammed down choke points when enemies are lined up, but uh, but so can the Cow Mangler. And it's super slow projectile means you have to schedule an appointment with the enemy if you want the chance to hit them, making it impossible to use as a close range slash mid range weapon. So let's fix this failure. First off, the cow mangler is completely fine as a weapon, no need for fixing there. But as for the bison, we were gonna push this thing off a bloody cliff to the point of extinction. I got two ideas on how to fix this thing and make it a better weapon, working not just with the cow mangler, but as a weapon in general. Fix number one, buff the speed, very original idea. The projectile moves as fast as my grandmother and she's been dead for 20 years. 
also give it a slight switch to speed increase. If you're losing out on a reliable hit scan weapon to deal with close range people, and you're also losing out on boots to get away from said people, and all you're left with is this gamble of a gun you got, you better be pulling that out quickly. Correction numero dos, a complete reimagining of the gun. The original Righteous Bison designed and showcased in the Deadliest Game seems to fire a sort of short-range lock-on bolt of lightning, very similar to the Short Circuit's primary fire. Except it fucking explodes aliens' heads off! This new Bison has an extremely limited range, roughly the range of this wall to this back wall. What's that in hammer units? No idea, keep it moving. It fires a slightly homing beam that locks on enemies, dealing 5 damage a tick or 10 damage a second. You can continuously hold the beam down for 5 seconds, totaling a maximum of 50 damage. Afterwards, it needs to be reloaded in the same pumping animation it has before with an extra pump in there. Each pump equals essentially a second of beam firing, in addition to having a quick deployment speed to ensure you can pull it out when needed. This was supposed to be out rebalancing or fixing weapons that don't work well with their sets, but with the Bison, it doesn't work well with anything and just needs a complete overhaul. Especially when the Grobbot set itself seems to be focused on nothing more than simple spamming. Maybe there's a better solution out there, but this one is mine. Amazingly, these armaments meant for assault do atrocious damage, arguably the most asinine and ailing artillery anyone can ask for. Although, rather annoyingly, the all-around theme makes quite the argument for this addition. An item set that originally started out extremely strong, only to be dragged down to the depths of hell with time. The original Liberty Launcher functioned similar to the Black Box. It had reduced clip capacity with 3 instead of 4, but had a 40% faster projectile speed. I suppose someone at Valve noticed how this weapon was just a stronger version of stock with a pretty weak downside, unlike the Direct Hit or Black Box, and changed it. As for the Reserve Shooter and Market Gardener, they've gone through hardly any major changes for Soldier specifically. Suppose you can't mini-crit people who are just jumping now, but who cares? The current Liberty Launcher is now a laughable joke with its low damage, but its slapped on stats make it sort of work within the set. The extra projectile promotes launching targets into the air, allowing easy air juggles with its increased projectile speed and extra clip size. This juggling can be comboed into the reserve shooter, made easier with its faster deployment to finish off targets and do the bulk of the damage, since the Liberty Launcher has ED. Execrable damage. Finally, that self-blast damage reduction and extra rocket mean more rocket jumping, which means more market gardens. It's a set that all plays off one another quite well and is actually unified and capable of being used together much better than what it was when it first came out. There's only one thing holding it back. That Liberty Launcher's damage penalty. Sure, it makes fighting people harder since you're slapping them with silly string, but it also makes it harder to combo into the reserve shooter as well. Since knockback is directly influenced by damage, with some exceptions, the less damage you do, the less people get knocked around. As a result, the only thing this item set needs to be truly skyrocketing is a 25% increase in the Liberty Launcher's knockback. Make it a hidden stat so it doesn't look ugly. We could give it more knockback to make it even more effective with the Reserve Shooter, but let's hold our horses here and make it equal to stock for the time being. From switch speed to sprint speed, this slick pyro set will send enemies straight to hell through cinders. It's an extremely simple but stupidly strong set of items for any situation. The gas jockey has seen some changes, but the set was a top tier threat mimicking a playstyle similar to the age old puff and sting. The degreaser igniting enemies with a follow up to the old power jack which had literally no downsides, having a 25% damage bonus and giving a massive 75 HP on kill. This isn't even mentioning the 10% faster movement speed the set itself gave when wearing the hat too, with the only downside being a 10% bullet damage increase as well. Nowadays, the degreaser is more or less the same. Has the same base damage as stock, air blast costs slightly more, afterburn does slightly less damage, and only switching to and from it grants any speed rather than just having it equipped in general. The gimmick of using this in combination with either your secondary or melee hasn't changed at all. What has, however, is the power jack. Diverting away from being an offensive powerhouse to a top tier mobility tool with his health on kill being reduced, but still there for some reason. Although this set is already insanely good nowadays and is the meta, the power jack sucks! But sucks like a $100 blowjob. It's simply too good for what it is. 
hence why we're going to completely ruin it by making it a more offensive tool rather than one for mobility. Give that speed to the hot hand if need be. This brand spanking new power jack is solely focused on getting health back on a kill to finish off enemies, granting 50 HP on a kill in addition to a slight 25% increase in damage. It keeps its damage increase penalty while equipped, in addition to having a slightly slower swing speed penalty. Good old Puff and Sting. It kinda encroaches on the Axe Extinguisher a little bit, but functions in conjunction with the Degreaser even more than it does now. Flying across the field with a flurry of flames reaching 550 degrees Fahrenheit, the Flog fires up not just your foes, but their feelings as well, but is feeble for fending friends. Thank fuck the Man Melter fixes that. The second Grodbot set, and the only one that has all three item slots being used, the Flog and Man Melter are extremely intertwined in their design and usage. As for the third degree, it exists. The Flog, with its lacking amount of air blast, makes you an extremely easy pick against soldiers in demos, requiring you to actually play partially around your team to be of any use, or go on the flank, attacking enemies from one way while distracted with everyone else. Of course, it's a dick move to just idly watch your teammates turn into Inferno, hence the Man Melter's main function and malfunction, being able to extinguish teammates, rewarding you with crits and health. It may have infinite ammo and a thousand projectile, but the rather clunky reload and firing of the weapon is as wonky as Willy. It's certainly not the worst weapon in the world, but it doesn't pack a wallop compared to the other flare guns. As for the third degree, I mean it's technically an upgrade, right? Ignore how if you have a crit boosted flog you'll just incinerate through both the medic and the pocket, and how being set on fire also reduces healing. The item set itself is pretty solid already, promoting smart team play and coordination to really do anything with it. The Flog needs a team to do well and the Man Melter promotes being near them. It doesn't really need any changes to the set to make it work well together. A match as strong as Bert and Ernie, Mr. Frog and Mr. Toad, or me and Tax Evasion. Of course, there is that ugly third degree third wheeling and the Man Melter's extra sexy scissors makes cheating on it pretty easy, so a slight buff is needed. The Man Melter receives a 10% damage bonus, increasing it to 33 damage on a normal hit and 99 on a crit, simply to separate it from the other flare guns, and make it usable even when not using the Flog. As for the third degree, it makes people American on hit now. Can't afford any healthcare. Hitting someone with a third degree blocks them from all healing sources for 8 whole seconds. If this seems too strong and downright cruel, alright, we'll let them pick up candy bars for health, but no medics, no dispensers. Nothing but home remedies. This was the first of three in a new series, obviously going over the item sets in TF2 and rebalancing the items within them so they can work together. Balancing bad weapons and giving good use of gimmicks. The defense class sets will be out whenever, but for now, feel free to comment on the changes proposed or your own ideas, especially in regards to the Righteous Bison. We are at the credits. We are at the credits. This is where I ramble for a minute and a half. Wow, we. You know, I was debating about adding, uh, having the full item set bonuses, you know, such as the health when having the hat, or the sentry resistance when having the tank buster. I was debating about having that. I might add that next time, you know, as a joke. I don't know. Who knows? Do you know? Do you even care? Do people even come this far into the video? Probably not. I don't really check their attention graphs or anything like that. But uh, yeah, that's fun.